Um, and also talking about um, pathogens uh, on our cannabis plants, there is also the pathogens of paperwork um, that we're all dealing with within this industry. And we're going to move right into that because that's just a really um, important way to mitigate the pathogens of paperwork. So, um, Holly, licensing and regulations and solutions and, and give us some unbelievable tidbits. And because you weren't here last night, tell us who you are and, and what, you're, what you're up to. Thank you. I am Holly Hall, and I'm a soil and water scientist with uh, training in the adaptive management of watersheds, which um, adaptive management principles rely on the integration of people that rely on natural resources to protect those natural resources and um, develop sustainability within the watershed system. I came back to Humboldt County about seven years ago after finishing my PhD to start a consulting firm that focused on watershed sustainability. And um, at that time, the government was here. And the government in Northern California and the government was really calling for people to start registering their water rights. And then it just, and so I started helping my community with their water rights. And within that, right on the heels of that, we moved into um, a tighter crackdown on medical marijuana that was being cultivated. And then we moved in very swiftly to Proposition 64, which is the commercial cannabis regulations in California. With that, there's a whole suite of water board regulations that cannabis farmers need to comply with and California Department of Fish and Wildlife regulations. And so now for the, about the last six and a half years, I've worked very closely with many cannabis farmers and our community in not only improving in environmental practices, but also in complying with the environmental regulations. So what we see here among the farms the, and, uh, you know, of the farmers that in this room are kind of a rare practices. And so, um, you know, improving environmental conditions is a gift that we have solutions that we can really um, provide to our globe as a whole. I'm guessing that California is not unique and that um, the way we produce commercial agriculture is not regenerative generally. And um, when we talk about solutions and these regulations and regenerative farming practices, I think that really holding up the way that we are working with our land as a standard for farming in general in the world is um, the best thing that can come out of, one of the best things that can come out of um, the regulated industry. Uh, the best thing is um, decriminalization in my opinion, but Second to that is to change the way we produce agricultural products in the globe. Now, um, in the first couple of years, I went maybe to like 500 cannabis farms, and I saw um, a lot of practices that could be improved upon. Now, I've narrowed it down. I have about 23 core farms that I support in compliance needs. And what I'm seeing now in terms of solutions for regulations, like I'm physically ill sitting here thinking about regulations it's so hard it's it's destroying families making people sick so what's the solution um i think the solution in part is knowing the rules and we don't need to know every detail but what we have i think the regulations are a toolkit then if we know the rules then we can protect ourselves and use them as tools as we move forward to achieve our goals. And so being able to, as a business owner, to assess what part of the regulation, regulatory process can I grapple with as a business owner? Identifying that, identifying how much time and capacity we have as business owners to deal with regulations, and identifying how much money we have to spend on compliance. Understanding those really helps us and will help business owners to 
be compliant in a way that needs to happen to help you all move forward with achieving your goals. And if you choose to work with a professional, make sure it's so much personality. Like I focus extremely on environmentalism. I don't touch metric. I have, I don't care. Like I'm wherever this amazing cannabis goes after it's grown in a way that is beneficial to the world. I don't give a fuck like that's not my thing but if someone else if it's really important to you to have a tight track and trace system work with professionals that their expertise serves you or no professionals that you trust and you call in like Daniel for example handles his own compliance but when he has the water board out there to verify his non-jurisdictional water source he calls me and we go out and together we like high five while the man signs off at his non-jurisdictional water source so knowing how to plug professionals in um, where you need them to alleviate your burden of regulations I think is really important. It takes a lot of thought. I'm looking at Alp and Glow and Moon Maid, who I work with co closely, and all of you do a really good job of strategizing your compliance needs and really being compliant where you need to be so that you can operate legally and also showcase your environmental standards. Another solution to the bigger cannabis production picture is teaching the government how it's done right. And so by complying, by opening your farms up to regulatory inspections, you have the opportunity to teach Sacramento, teach the capital, teach the people that are creating the boxes that need to be checked, teach them, show them how we can work with the land to produce medicine, to produce food, to produce fiber, to store carbon in a way that is very ethical and very kind to the environment. Because if you drive down to Sacramento, the which is the capital of, of California, you're driving through monoculture almond orchards that are dripping with poison, that are killing the bees that they're dependent on for um, pollination to produce. So we have the opportunity to change that paradigm every day. And regulations and regulatory compliance is that's the suit. I often consider myself a wolf in sheep's clothing when I go to Sacramento and I'm doing my policy work because we are having to put ourselves in their boxes so that they can identify with us and use, even ingest the information, the education that we have to offer them. I think that's like a broad um, scope on regu you know, regulatory compliance, but to sum it up and go back, know the rules enough to allow you to pass the test to operate legally to allow you to go about doing your business work with professionals that you trust when you need them and be realistic about what part of the regulatory process you want to take on um, within your own business and um, yeah be be really honest with yourself about time and money and capacity and desire. Think of um, a professional as like a lawyer or a medical doctor or a tax accountant. It's really somebody that you're going to hire for a very unique job and um, yeah, be, be real about what that job is. You talked about uh, seeking professional advice and uh, Ruby Steinbrecher um, you've been helping people, you know, with this uh, pathogen of, of paperwork that we deal with and, and now trying to figure out how we can better jump the hoops and also how we can work together. There's a lot of people in this room and a lot of us have the same issues that come up in the regulatory system, whether it's with paperwork or if we run against some troubles and, 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 and things are coming up for us. A lot of times it's repeated and we talk about shared counsel as well. So last night, uh, Ruby, you were wearing your hat as Madrone, but you're also an attorney and you also help many uh, cannabis families. So I'd love for you to talk on this. Yeah, so 
Um, I think that, number one, I mean, a, a lot of what Holly said, I wholeheartedly support. And to have um, uh, an awareness of what <coughs> you're <coughs> prepared to deal with personally, what you have the capacity for, and what you actually have the understanding of, and when you need to call in the professionals. And really, and um, don't be intimidated because you are, you know, have such a wealth of knowledge and are experts in your area and I know it sometimes a lot of times I'll talk to people and they're very cautious or feel like they sound dumb or something like that and I think that if people could let their guard down and really own their power and be confident about who they are and understand that um, attorneys and CPAs and consultants are there to provide you with a service and not to tell you what to do and if you go in with that kind of um, attitude it can definitely help the dynamic in terms of them really serving you and serving your needs and understanding that you know um, a lot of times there's folks out there that will say you know you're gonna need my ongoing help and I don't think that's always the case and you know just be cautious and take it all with a grain of salt and take what you need um, and I th also think that there's no reason that people cannot um, join together especially in a local group of farmers or if you have similar issues with uh, um, just a group of your friends who are farmers getting problems with contracts or going to market, it's completely acceptable for you to go to an attorney together and pay for that time together and ask a bunch of questions. And and it's also just an opportunity to pitch again this, um, you know, joining this marketing education consortium as a platform that everybody can get behind because that power in so many ways can be leveraged obviously but especially with seeking professional counsel getting um, you know time with uh, service professionals or attorneys that you might not be able to access um, as individuals I think it's really important and awesome and um, <clears throat> so uh, when you go to see counsel or seek professional counsel in terms of an attorney. Um, I think that one of the pivotal times is, I mean, you all are way far along. You've already got your entities formed and kind of your business structure, but before making a decision about anything like that, it's really worth it to go talk to an attorney and talk to an accountant because uh, so many of those decisions are really driven by your finances, where you are as a farm, where you're going, and that can really, if you go in, uh, you know, either before or after, but it's really important to do those in tandem because those decisions are really tied together about what kind of entity you're gonna form, how you're gonna do your accounting, how much you really need to put into that, and then it's gonna help you make decisions about how you're structuring your business, what kind of contracts you're entering into, and all of that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else I think that, oh, yeah. make sure that you, um, <laughs> at, uh, attorneys will often, especially when you come in as a group, be very cautious about representing multiple people, and so you have to waive your right to independent counsel, and that's basically just saying, and they'll have you sign a form that makes sure you understand that you're getting advice as a whole from this one attorney, and it absolves that counsel of any conflict of interest that may come up later. Ruby, can you speak to um, <clears throat> indemnifications? Um, we're seeing here that farmers are consistently having to sign indemnifications in the compliance process. How can they protect themselves? Um, so usually that's, you know, and with manufacturers or distributors or anyone that they're working for, everyone wants indemnification. So one thing is that you make sure it's a mutual indemnification clause so that you're also protected. Um, I, honestly, like the best way to protect yourself in that kind of situation is um, to run a good business, to be operating in good faith. I can't tell you how much it matters to be able to show that you have operated in good faith, you've done everything that you can to be in compliance because if you end up it before a, you know, an arbiter or a judge or something like that in the situation where you're, you know, having indemnification is 
coming up as uh, you're needing to be protected in a lawsuit, it goes a long way to show that you're a good player, that you've done everything you can, you've been an upstanding uh, participant in that contract, and uh, mutual indemnification, and then insurance is a is a thing now and if you are a licensed operator you have to have insurance and um, sometimes we don't always get the insurance but it there are certain you know categories of insurance that are not as expensive as you think they are um, for some product liability coverage and things like that and that's really where the indemnification is coming up right now is really being afraid of these lawsuits and the vape crisis and all that kind of thing yeah, and also I just wanted to say that um, the Pure Collective has several lawyers that, that work specifically with us, so that's something that we have as a resource um, within this group already and can help answer some quick questions and point you in the right direction, and that's a way that we can collectively work together. Mm -hmm.